Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is interweaving string. Given strings S1, S2, and S3, find whether S3 is formed by interweaving S1 and S2. Now, interweaving of two strings, uh, S and T, is a configuration where they are divided into non-empty substrings such that S1 plus S2, so on and so forth, T1 plus T2, and uh, the interweaving is going to be like some combination of S1 plus T1, T S2 plus T2, so on and so forth. Now we want to see if we can form this string here using these two strings. Now initially I thought this was a pretty simple problem of using two pointers and just iterating down the string trying to see if we could match each one. But the reason that's not going to work is say that we had uh, some string like this as well as another string like BBCC and say that we're trying to figure out can we create uh, this one here, AABBCCBB. If I was to just have two pointers and just see if we could start off with one, it'd start off with here, and we'd say, okay, A is possible, so we'll pop that off, and then we'll go here, all oh, A's is possible, and then we'll go here with B, but it won't know whether to select B's from here or here. It's just gonna select which other one you added first. So here it's gonna uh, use these two, and then we're going to reach the end of this string. And now it's going to say, oh, we can't make CCBB anymore. But if we had taken the other route, uh, say that we'd gone here and used these two Bs, then we could, right? We can get here, CC, map those off, and then map these off. And we form the entire string. So the question is, how do we decide uh, which path we can go down for this interweaving? And really, there's really no way to know. Uh, the only way we can do that is to just try it out. And that would require require us to write some sort of recursive function to do that. So uh, let's start by doing that. Let's write a recursive function by first getting the length of the uh, string we're trying to form, as well as I'm going to call it AB to equal the length of S1 and length of S2. Okay, so now we're going to have our um, recursive function here, and we're going to pass in I, J, and K. And each one of these, i, refers to what point we are in string 1, j refers to what index number we are at string 2, and k, um, what string we are, what index number we are at in our, in our final output string. Okay, so first we need a base case, right? And what, what is the base case? Well, if i uh, is equal to, let's say, a, and j is equal to b, and k is equal to n, Basically, we've reached the end of all three of these strings. That means we're at the end. We've been able to get here, so we have to return a true. Uh, there is one edge case, though. We could have a case where the lengths don't equal one another, and we don't want that to return true, right? So we'll say uh, if a plus b does not equal n, return a false immediately, and we don't even have to enter this here. So now we want to go down our two paths, right? And I'm going to return two booleans here, one boolean two, boolean one for the first path, and boolean two for the second path. We'll start off by initializing them to false. And we are going to say if, let's see, s1 of i is equal to s3 of k, okay, then uh, we're going to, that means that we could take this character at this point, so we're going to um, recursively call our next one. So b1 is equal to, call it recursion, so this would be i plus 1, j, keep j is the same, and k plus 1. Now we want to also do it the other way as well, if s2j is equal to s3k, then we're going to see if we can go down this path, and can we reach the end as well. i is going to be the same, but j plus 1, k plus 1 here. Now one thing to know is we also need to make sure we are in bounds of our string, so i needs to be less than a, and j needs to be less than b. Now finally, we're going to return um, b1 or b2 if either one of these are true. That means we were able to get to this end case here, so we should return a true, right? So finally, just return the recursion, to start at 0, 0, 0 for all of these, and this would work. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be a exponential time complexity, uh, but we could avoid that by using some memoization uh, because we can potentially recall the same IJKs multiple times. So what we'll do is have a memoization here. We'll say, uh, let's see, if 
if uh, memo, let's just say if ijk is in memo, and just return whatever's in there. So ijk in memo, then return memo of this. Otherwise, add it at the very end, b1 or b2. Okay, so let's see if this works. It should return a true, and that does. And there we go. So this would be, time complexity-wise, A times B. Uh, same with space complexity, it's going to be A times B. Uh, now, they did give you a follow-up here. Could you solve this by using only S2 length additional memory space? So here, in this case, it would be, can we use just B memory space? Now, we know there's a recursive solution, and we could optimize it by using memoization, but can we have a DP solution here? And we could, uh, but it's a little bit complicated to kind of understand how to build up this DP array. So I'm just gonna um, go straight to the O of length S2 solution. And what we'll do is create a DP array here, and we're gonna have them all Booleans, just like our recursive function, but we have to have a plus one here because we need one in, one cell in our DP array to signify when it's just an empty string. We're just trying to calculate nothing. And that's always going to be true, right? So uh, what we'll do is have a nested for loop for i in range of a, uh, but we're going to have to have plus one here because of that extra index point. And for j in range of b plus one, uh, the first thing we want to do is if i and j are both zero, we're going to just set this DP uh, as true immediately. Uh, so dp of j, well, I should say if i equals 0 and j equals 0, then dp of j, which is at this point 0, this equals true. So that's kind of like the base part that we're going to build upon to see if we can go down all of these paths. And either one of these, we could find that we were able to um, form this part, uh, string s3 up to this point using up to the index points of i and j, then we want to set that as true. So uh, the first thing, since we only have one uh, 1D array, we want to start with when i equals zero, uh, dpj, let's see, is gonna be equal to gpj minus one. We're gonna look back ahead, and we gotta make sure that these points from S1 and S3 are the same. Uh, so let's see here, S3, S2, so i equals zero, it's actually S2 here, okay, S2, and we'll say, uh, let's see, J minus one is equal to S3 of, well, I know that I is gonna be zero, but for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna add that here, IJ minus one. If this is the case, we're gonna update that. Now, we also need to set to when J is equal to zero, say else if J equals zero, uh, we'll do something similar here, but instead of looking back ahead, we're going to use the same one. We're going to build upon the same one to make sure that we could build here. We'll say dp of j, s1, i minus 1 equals s3, i plus j minus 1. Now finally, for everything else, what we want to do is uh, check both. We're going to say if either one of these is true, we're going to say uh, this one or this one will set dp of j to equal true. All right, so now all we need to do is return the very last point on this dp array. Let's make sure this works before I submit submit it. Uh, okay, so I messed something up here. Let's see, dp of j. Mm hmm, that's three. One, this one equals, oh, okay, K. Oh, I'm sorry, not K, this would be J. There's no K here, is there? Hmm. Okay, so that looks like it's working here. See, I said it's true at this point. So uh, let's go ahead and submit this. 
And there we go. So time complexity is actually the same. It's going to be A times B. But we do save some space with this DP array. We only have to use O of B space. So yeah, this is definitely a tricky solution. Really, if you can get to the memoization or recurs recursive solution with memoization, I think that's good enough. But um, yeah, I think this is a good practice problem to kind of figure out how you can build a dynamic programming solution from a recursive solution. Now, I do want to go more deeply into this because it's a little bit complicated and I don't fully understand it. Um, so hopefully when I have time, I'll come back to problems like this and kind of go by try to solve these step by step. But if you want to do it on your own, it's definitely solutions right here. So take a look. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.